Okay, good evening, everybody. It's 6 01. We'll call the meeting to order. We have a quorum. Thank you all for being here. Um, Nancy, you've got attendance, right? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so old business, we have minutes from February 28th. And I want to thank Patrick for running the meeting in my absence. Much appreciated. Absolutely. I'll move approval, move approval by Bob Berman. Do we have a second? Second from Lois. Any comments, corrections, before we vote? I think it all look good. Look good, Nancy. All, right. all in favor, please <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 There was a lot of stuff. <laughs> and we are all in the room. Is that correct? Yes. We have a report. Or am I missing? Yes. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, Thank you. All right. Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Um, new business. I uh, just wanted to let everybody know that I did uh, give an update to town council governance subcommittee on March 4th. Uh, and also since the last meeting, I did respond to some questions that were presented to me from uh, Paula Jones, Chair of the Conservation, Energy, and Environment Committee. She's working with um, the Planning Department on a um, priority priority climate action plan for the uh, Capital Region Council of Governments. And so, I just want to know the status of um, uh, things related to that, such as uh, um, EV charging stations uh, and uh, solar panels. And she was also curious about our word friendly glass, which mm -hmm. unfortunately is not part of the project. So, but I did her up, update her on the status of all those things. Uh, and that's all I have. Uh, so let's get right on to um, our construction manager. Anthony is here with us and we have Scott on the phone and on the line. And I see, uh, yeah. who else did I see? John Downs is with us. You're on. Yeah. All right. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to take a second to share my screen, my agenda. All right. Hopefully, everybody can see it online. It's it zoomed in enough. All right. Typical standard uh, procedure for these this meeting agenda project update. I uh, just want to give a, a update on the permits. Uh, we are still waiting from our mechanical and fire protection subcontractors. At this point in time, all mechanical is in for review. All the documents. Uh, so MJ Dailies is pushing the, the building department and fire marshal to get that turned over. At this point in time, fire protection is a little bit more sensitive. Uh, we're going to get them some shop drawings and some calculations for them to review so we can pull the permit as well. Um, so that's where we stand as far as permits. Everything else is in our hands um, and we're moving forward. Now, item 1B uh, here, construction schedule update. Um, I'll just hit uh, Riley real quick. Uh, it's still continuing to be used as the staging and lay down area uh, for any uh, soils um, and any materials that get delivered to the site. As we extend the new building's footprint out with the foundations, that site is becoming really tight, as well as we just got word from the MDC that we're no longer able to park or stockpile anything that goes above their 24 inch RCP line. So we're kind of uh, moving around and, and playing uh, uh, parking equipment where we can at this point in time. So their concern is that our CP pipe that's kept people off the ground. Um, at this point in time, there still is enough space where we got the heavy equipment. We could push it around, uh, move it to other sides of the building, uh, but we're quickly encroaching that. Uh, so that kind of leads me into this next item, or this, I should say first item for Prosser is the site clean soil that is currently being stockpiled and that's on the Riley site will be removed from the site in its entirety. If it can't be reused or whatever cannot be reused um, will be taken away. Any contaminated soil, which is on the Riley, which is on the processor side, which is covered underneath the poly and on top of poly will be fully removed from the site. Right now, Manafort is um, following the soil uh, management plan uh, to a T. With that being said, um, the characterization of the soils that are in that plan is what they found. So right now they're contacting a couple of the disposal waste facilities that could accept this, this type of soil, uh, contaminated soil that we speak of. 
Uh, so hopefully that gets removed from the site and that will open up a little bit more real estate for us. Uh, site grading for the processor, new processor library continues along with the foundation excavations in prep for the cast and place concrete work. Manafort has moved to the north side and south side of the new library footprint for the foundation excavations. They have imported um, a bunch and placed a bunch of structural fill on the east side. Uh, that was part of that 14 feet elevation um, that they were going to install in one to two foot lifts and compact it. Uh, Tri State has monitored every placement of that structural fill with a compaction test. It's all passed. Um, so once we finish the foundation on that side, we'll be able to backfill that structural fill closer to that retaining wall which is where we pour today. So all the concrete forms, rebar installations, steel embeds, anchor bolts have been installed and inspected on that 14 foot high retaining wall, allowing for the concrete pour to take place today. Tilcom had their trucks finally orchestrated in 10 minute intervals with the pump truck on site uh, with three foot lifts going down that concrete wall and forms and all the rebar. So it was a nice place. You'll see um, if you guys are around on Friday, those forms are coming off. So you'll see the nice brand new uh, retaining wall up in the center of the building. All right, as we move along That's the rest exciting. of the foundation. So yeah, come on, come on and check it out. Even if it rains. Even if it rains, come on out. Concrete forming and rebar, I, I should say, is also continuing on the northeast and south elevations in preparation for the next concrete pour. We have a handful of miscellaneous uh, piers um that we're trying to get to on friday um if not monday will be the day for that <clears throat> soon after the concrete foundation is installed we're going to start with the underground mep utility installations uh we're going to start having manafort trench out and lay out the trenching for those underground utilities um, again this is once the foundation work is complete as well as right before the structural steel starts okay um, we're looking right now, probably around mid-April for structural steel. Um, so you'll see columns going in. Everything is going to be primed white, so it's really going to it's going to pop, um, and we'll we'll be on our way from that point. Um, other than that, there's really no update um, that's going on. Come on down and, and check it out when uh, when those columns start getting stripped on on Friday. All right. Take questions on that portion of your report. Questions for uh, Anthony. Just, just a comment. I, I was sitting as a light here watching the orchestration, the concrete trucks back and forth, it lined up, in and out. It was amazing to watch the coordination. So they did not hold up traffic. That's great. Okay. Very well done. Thank you. Questions for Anthony so far? <laughs> Keep it going. So Tri-State, you know, I just want to add to that. Tri-State was there every step of the way, inspecting rebars, inspecting the, the concrete pour. They took test cylinders of the concrete that was placed in that, to that retaining wall. So we'll be able to take some breaks um, in a couple of weeks to make sure that concrete is, is is curing to the right strength. I believe, I don't know if that wall is 4,000 or 4,500 PSI. Let us take a break. So what it is, is, is Tri-State takes a cylinder, a plastic cylinder, fills it with the concrete that they're putting in that wall, right? And there's a couple of them. So you have a, a one week break to see if it's increasing in its PSI strength, then two weeks, three weeks, and then to, and until it hits to design strength. So in order to move on to the next step of the structural steel, we need to make sure that all that concrete that we have poured per design is meeting that PSI strength, and that's kind of how we judge that. They okay. actually compress it till it breaks. Until it snaps. That's why it's called a break. Yeah. Yep. And so. uh, Tilicon, its quality control was on site as well. They take their own samples to close It's two people testing. That's yeah. good. Yeah. All righty. Moving on, 1C, requisitions and change order proposals. Again, our favorite topic. Requisitions, I'll first start with the easy stuff. March 2024 is being assembled, and I hope to have it fully assembled for our 327 uh, at the next committee meeting. All right, moving on, some budget COPs here. I'm moving down the line. As you can see, uh, the budget COP section has moved into the official COP section uh, for review and approval uh, for tonight. Well, first things first, a COP 7B, children's room, uh, MEP modifications. 
Um, we are still collecting proposals in from the subs. We do have a, a, a large credit from our electrician, but there also have uh, some ads from our structural steel subcontractor as well as MJ Daily that I'm kind of going through that actually came in this week this afternoon. Uh, so I was able to kind of modify the budget a little bit there to get a little bit more accurate. COP number nine, structural revisions and clarifications. Uh, I still have to put this one together. It was some footing revisions uh, for some uh, plumbing, I should say some roof drains. Uh, so I have a cost of $1,979. That's gotta be submitted to TSKP for the review as well as their consultant. And then we have COP 12, which we talked about last time, which was the elephant in the room of that $149,000. For the wetlands clarifications after that meeting um the next day we did put an email together for all the design team members uh mark and nancy uh with the history from the wetlands department uh the asi that was given to us from tskp uh with the comments that came back from the wetlands as well as the attached proposal from manafort i got that over to slr who is a civil consultant and they are kind of reviewing it for scope of work and uh, we'll go from there. He did bring up a couple points, a couple items that could probably be taken off the, off the scope of work. Um, I did kind of try to pick the brain of Manafort's project manager today and see, is this all wish list items, this, that, and another thing? And he believes that it's, it's kind of, um, you know, belts and suspenders kind of thing. So if SLR and, and the town and the wetlands could, can kind of come to agreement, we feel that that scope of work can be reduced. So just to clarify, these, as I understand it, these are stipulations from our wetlands agent up, upon us getting approval uh, from him for this project that are vague as to whether they are requirements or whether they are just recommendations. And so that's what we're going through the process of Correct. trying to establish Very well what, what they are. So, because uh, it's not clear whether they're requirements or not. Nancy? Anthony, this was 125000 last meeting. Yep, so meeting. last meeting. It's I, going in the wrong direction. So, so what happened last meeting is um, I got this agenda printed out at like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And then 5 o'clock is when Manafort submitted their proposal. Okay. And it was a little bit higher. And then when I run it through our program software, we have our, obviously, our markups for our, our bond and all that, all that stuff. Okay. Manafort. Okay, and then here COP 14 is going to be removed for the next meeting. Again, that was the $2,500 for dust control water requirements during the mass demolition. We were able to make go away. Excuse me, my dust. <laughs> what did you mean by belts and suspenders? I've, I've heard um, I, I think it's 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 a little extra um, security, right? And oh, if the yeah. project's going on, maybe they could get away with adding some things to the project. Um, over there, but right now the design was made with TSKP and the consultants for um, the storm drainage from the Riley site and the Prosser site. That was that was designed the way it is, and it's that's the intent, and it should obviously be just fine. So, but, but they came from our wetlands. Right, page. when wetlands comes in now, it's even though we have a design and it's going should work, right? They came in and added a bunch more items now. Like Mark said, we're trying to decipher if that's a wish list item or if it's a it's a necessity. I still don't understand how the timing got so. Why the timing is that you get the information after the permit has been requested? It wasn't. It was part of the final document that said we can go ahead with the following stipulations. So, so we didn't know the stipulations prior. We knew them. But some of the stipulations, if I can clarify it, there were stipulations and then there were recommendations, which were not requirements in order for us to maintain the permit. Correct. And I believe that's what SLR and the wetlands agent and Manafort are sorting through now. They're, they're working through it now. Correct. So who's got the final say on what's in and what's out? Wetlands. Uh, wetlands. <laughs> but I but I think we want to have our professionals uh, take their understanding to the wetlands agent. So 
in actuality, I think our design professionals should have responded to those stipulations at the time they were received. If we want to point fingers, but there they are. So we need to understand. I mean, it's not like uh, if it's something we had to do, it's something we have to do. Right. I mean, it's as simple as that. But we should have known sooner whether we should have. But that's more peace of mind than uh, a budgetary right. item. I mean, with this being said, I would think if the wetlands had a real issue uh, with, uh, with letting us proceed, we would never got our building. Correct. The permit, the what was permit was the design was acceptable. They just added certain conditions, which, by the way, get added to every single. We got to our TPZ permit. Almost every single permit the town issues, there's usually other conditions that are not major enough to hold up the permit, but things that need. You know, they, they need to like get rectified, address. you know, yeah. as, as they're the not project. major things usually. I mean, to me, 150,000 is major, but right. um, <laughs> Anthony, is it correct in saying all these are all they're in the road? Correct? They're in the road, it's part of what's driving the cross, cross, and it's off your it's off the property, which mm -hmm. is, is part of that. Is Combi it? Yeah, combination, but most of it, it's in the it's in the road, gotcha. and we're working with obviously MDC again because now there's uh digging into that 24 inch RCP, so it's a whole other. So perhaps it could get delayed to a future project by someone else if it's in the road. Correct. Right. At that point. If it's something nice in the long run to have and, right. and doesn't need to be part of our project, it could be a future project. Right. That's my story. I'm going to stick to it. You mean like a try. CIP project? Or? Like, like, yeah. like a state a project when they project. rebuild the road <laughs> ah. or something. You know, there, there is a project like for the culvert. Making that up, but yeah, on Mountain Avenue. Yeah, on Mountain Avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so, yeah. But none of it relates to the structural integrity of the building. No, 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 no. It's no, it's wet. I mean, it's, it's, it's all wetlands related. Right. When these stipulations come up, are there standard prices that are associated with a particular kind of stipulation, or uh, are those rather flexible too? I, I think, it, you know, it depends what, like, for instance, if you're talking about, like, unit pricing per contract, we usually try to establish those. Like, for instance, um, our demolition, we usually put abatement uh, unit pricing in there. So if we do come with the unforeseen, that cost is already in the contract, so we could quickly reference it, and everybody knows that's the number. You just need to quantify it. But as far as this work, you know. Not at this point in time. I mean, we do have labor rates for, you know, the excavators and the equipment and the operators and all that stuff. But when it comes to like the material and the 300 linear feet of berm, that's five feet deep with, you know, copious amounts of, of bark mulch. That's like a, a $20,000 add uh, to that change order. It's, you know, it's off, it, it all fluctuates. All right. So we have a lot more to hear about. Of this. course. Yeah. This is going to be. There's a lot of legwork to be done. And what what's our current budget number for this? One forty nine. Right, but I mean we never had a <laughs> no. There's no line item. No, no, this is oh, unanticipated construction. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't remember that. If we need to do it, it all comes out of contingency. Right. Yeah. Okay. So right now, what I feel is just to kind of summarize this is this is the worst case scenario. It's not going to mm -hmm. get worse than this. The best thing we could do is remove scope, get rid of some of the wish list items that may be in there, hidden. Uh, but that's for SLR and, and the town weapons to, to kind of hammer out. Okay. okay. Does anybody have any other any questions? Um, in regards to this one? <laughs> nope. Please. All right, we're continuing. All right, so now on to the on the official business uh, for the COPs uh, that move from budget to official. Uh, we're looking for approval. Uh, just a caveat here, um, these items also have been reviewed by, by TSKP, Colliers, and any consultants of TSKP, uh, for instance, RZ, who's the MEP engineer. Uh, so going down, COP number six, uh, which we talked about last meeting, is the electrical room revisions for a cost of $24,541. They did drop down a, a bit based on review from RZ and some comments on the electrical side of things. Uh, so taking that into consideration in the revisions from our electrician, we add that sum of $24,541 for electrical revisions. 
questions on that COP number six? I'll move approval of so it's on the table. Second. Moved and seconded by the Bobs. Thank you very much. All right, and uh, uh, questions, comments on this? I'm trying, I'm trying to remember what the change was. So the change was an additional, because of the size and spacing within this electrical room and the, the floodplain um, being above that floodplain limit elevation, uh, the original panel size that we had was going to be um, encroaching onto the floor into the, oh, the floodplain. Okay. So in order to get it up, the transformers up, we had to go to a two panel system, which added conduit um, right. accessories, as well right. as you know, building some uh, supplemental steel supports to get the transformers um, off the ground. Okay. Other questions, comments? So nobody saw that ahead of time. Just, just uh, okay. this is Richard. If I could ask, uh, isn't this pertaining to a change in the transformer? Um, I believe a, a, a transformer was available that was a different size, which then required some re-engineering of the equipment in the electric room. No, I think on that, Richard, from the beginning, uh, during the bid period, we went from uh, like the switch gear onto the panelized system. Um, and what happened was the panelized system uh, was never taken into account the sheer size of, the, of, of a single panel. Yeah, all that uh, rework of the switch gear and the change was done in pre-construction, Richard. Okay, so um, I guess I'm not that, I don't recall it correctly then, uh, but this was reviewed by our office and also by RZ. Correct, and this is, a, yeah, that's why I said at the beginning of this section, the caveat out there that all these change order proposals at this point in time have been reviewed by uh, Collier's TSKP and their consultants moving forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions? So I'm just asking, it sounds like somebody missed something here is what it sounds like, or am I, am I missing something? Uh, yeah, uh, they didn't anticipate the, the flood sure. line, the sheer the sure panel size in relation to the size of the panel. I don't see a penalty to us. I mean, we would have had it go on during design you know, to this, you know, it's not like the wrong one got installed and we're paying to take it out or return it or, you know, that would obviously be a, you know, that would be penalized, okay. you know. Fair enough. Any other questions? Okay, all in favor, please uh, say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Thank you very much. That passes number six. Next. All right, COP7A, this is for the downs side of this PR, uh, which is our BIM MEP coordinating consultant. Uh, we have a cost here of $30,915 uh, from KLS, who is our consultant. Uh, during this whole process uh, with the MEP coordination, the children's area on the, on the second level uh, was basically a problem with getting um, MEP systems to all fit and jive together. So through the course of two months and time, timeless meetings and um, trying to keep the aesthetic value inside the library and maintaining ceiling heights, um, we came across a, a, a solution at the end of the day, um, but it did require some redetailing, um, MEP modeling um, in the amount of $30,915 from our MEP consultant. Uh, what they do is they take all the MEP components, they fit it into the model, they run clash detections, they move things around, try to get things to fit basically inside the inside the building, inside the space. Um, but what was very important in this meeting was going to keep the aesthetic integrity of the library. We didn't want to drop any ceiling heights. We wanted to keep them as, as tall and as high as possible uh, through this. Uh, so we definitely, at the end of the day, uh, came to a, a solution. So everything's going to work, uh, but there was some additional legwork and, and time uh, for detailing and modeling that was required. So moved. Second by Mr. Reich, second by Mr. Berman. Thank you. Questions, Nancy. Anthony, what's the difference between this and 7B? Seven. This is just our our consultants. So that's fee is just for our for the consultants. BIM. The for the BIM case. and the modeling and the coordination and running the meetings, um, as and the seven B part is the subcontractors end of things. Okay. 
So in order to kind of push this along and, and get my vendor paid pretty much, I wanted to uh, get this split up as well as I worked with our subcontractors to go over part B, which is the revised PR number four that came out. So this has been going, this is one of the things that's been going on for a while, right? Yeah, for quite some time. Yeah, okay. time. Yeah. And KLS is your consultant? Yep. Other questions? And, and this is again something that was unforeseen between the architecture and the, and the, uh, Utilities. I, I, I don't believe it was anything that was unforeseen or, or incorrect, but when you have all these duct works and, and this plumbing and piping and mechanical piping and, and lights and ceilings and hangers and struts and all this stuff hanging, sometimes it just, it, you, you can't really see everything until our BIM designer goes in and, and fully lays this thing out. Other questions, comments? Okay, all in favor of approving change order proposal number 7A, please say aye. 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 Please. Any abstentions? I think I'll abstain. Motion passes. Thank you very much. 7A. Next, please. All right, COP 10 is the exterior routing of the tell data. Uh, during this process and during the bid period, uh, nobody, we didn't understand where the box was, the handhole was for the tell data and comm lines. Um, during the process, you know, once we got going here, we did have Crown Castle, who works with the town, verify the handhole location. It's totally across the site. So PR was issued, and many meetings were held uh, to review the, the prior routing to get those lines into the building. Uh, so the PR came out where we have to trench basically across the entire site, uh, put some bedding material you down, that? put some uh, bedding material down, and uh, run conduit from our electrician all the way across the site, put it down, and then into the building. So this cost of $31,758 at this point in time is for Manafort, who's going to be trenching across the site as well as custom electric uh, of uh, for installation of the actual conduit uh, and, and pulling a wire from the handhold that the Teledata Crown Castle established. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Ike, seconded by Mr. Berman. Questions? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Berman. If I understand this correctly, it kind of means that if we, if we know this in the beginning, pretty much this would have been or part of the initial it, cost. It, it would have been this, this, yeah. you know, this number would have been part of the original yeah, budget. Right. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, you know, going forward, right, nobody likes change orders because you're not getting your competitive dollar value. Maybe it would have been a little lower during the competitive bid. Um, but right now, yes, it, yeah. would have, it would have been uh, scope added, you know, during the bid or scope added now. Yeah, it probably would have been close to this number anyway. Pretty darn close. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments? So, uh, Mr. Patrick. Uh, thank you. So, Anthony, I mean, I'm trying to look at the diagrams, which is hard to do on the phone. But uh, so, like, I do see a line. It looks like it goes from the front of the building all the way to the back of the building. Is that the trench you're talking about? So, or? right here, Patrick. Actually, and, if you see this this line, it's going to it's going from here. Yeah, yeah. Across the front. Underground, uh, uh, okay. And where it swings around, we've noticed that Eversource might have an issue, so we have to go around the new transformer. That's what I, as that's the line. See, yeah, as okay. you can see in Jason's, yep. but you know, the line go is right here yeah. coming across the site. We can't take a, a, a sharp 90 degree to the left because the new transformer is there, so we have to sweep it around. Wow. But we didn't move the transformer because we yeah. had already decided. Correct. Right. Oh, correct. All right. Any other questions? Thank Comments? you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And it is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Next, COP number 11, door hardware clarifications and revisions per ASI 4. We have a cost of $13,547. This is for net credits and net ads at the end of the day. 
for swapping um, pricing and material. So there was an upcharge at the end of the day for the material. And Jeff, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I guess this happened uh, in a meeting after the bids went out and then we're just basically catching up on document control at this point in time. Yeah, I believe it was some levers and stuff that uh, Deanna had gone through with the library staff and they wanted some change with some of the doors. And so moved. Okay, we have moved by uh, Mr. Ike, seconded by, I'll second Mr. Berman. Thank you. Questions, comments? That's what I really don't understand. Uh, you want to get into it, Anthony? Yeah, I could get into it a little bit. So, I guess after the fact, and Jeff, stop me if I'm I'm over speaking. Um, you have a a little bit more history on the meeting uh, meetings and Deanna that held with the with the town, but after the bids came in, this meeting was held that changed some of the hardware sets from the base bid. So, what this change order is, it's crediting back the base bid levers and lock sets door hardware going to a different style, a different one. And at the end of the day, between the credits from the base bid and that upcharge of the new hardware, you have a net, uh, a net add of $13,000. Yeah, I understand. Can you put it in perspective? Part. What's the overall cost okay. of this package? So, for instance, accurate door, I don't know what the contract value is. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I don't know what the value of the contract is at the, on the top of my head. I get that it's not a lot of money, yep. but I don't understand the process. Um, who, who requested the check? Yeah, why? It was distributed. Jeff, um, I'm going to kind of turn this to you because, you know, they, Deanna had the meeting after the bids uh, came back and this had some modifications to this hardware and this is kind of where we stand. Correct. That's exactly what happened. So everything was out to bid. Everybody was pricing the original package. Um, Deanna had a meeting, I guess, with some last minute changes on some of the some of the lever handles, <clears throat> excuse me, and other things. So I can if you want me to, I can pull the history out of that and uh and email it to everybody if you'd like, Lois. It's it's just the process that I'm wondering. Um what happens if somebody decides we need different kinds of furniture afterwards? That's 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 a good point because um, if you do want to change things after the rest of the team or their consultants or subconsultants has already started to pile everything together, bought the materials, got everything going. If there's a change that happens after, say, a sort of sign off and approval, then that kind of throws a wrench in everything, and then they have to go back and retool everything or find another piece of different kind of furniture or something. So. That's why it's important to sort of uh, get consensus and and make sure that we have things before they go out to bid, you know, resolved and everybody's approving them. That's why I'm always anxious to get approvals and get sign off so that we can keep the ball rolling. Otherwise, it's it's going to take forever to get something done. So I hear what you're saying, Lois. Um, in this case, that, that must have happened after the bids. There was a meeting that came after. There were some last minute changes. Yeah. Were these functional changes, changes or aesthetic changes, Jeff? Uh, I'll have to pull the meeting minutes and look at them. Let me see if I can do it right now. But we should move on while I do that. I'm not going to be able to answer that right now. Uh, okay, fair enough. Um, well, do you want to postpone this until we get the uh, information? So with these type of change orders, right, it's more of a material switch right yeah. they didn't order anything yet i'm looking at the uh, architect supplemental and it does show for each door in question you know like for example six hinge yeah. one dust proof strike one flush bolt one classroom i mean right so what happens like is anywhere. yeah it's all bold and it's added mm -hmm. it's added it's added material so for instance if if we get an approved submittal and we haven't released the material yet right Sometimes you could catch this where cancel that order. We have some changes coming out, right? Give us a credit back for the original plan and give us an ad for the added hardware or the upcharge going from, a, right? The best I could say is, let's say you're going from a, a Honda Accord to a Mercedes, right? You're going to take the Honda back and obviously you have the upcharge for more expensive. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to hold up everything oh, for this. Problem. 
it is the principle of the thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I will I will vote with it this time. Next time I will not. What's well, practically no matter what it is. Yeah. Lois, I think the like like point is well taken, and, and um, you know my experience with hardware has been there is always changes because there's hundreds and hundreds of items literally. And so when it comes down to the final review and compared to the initial design, there's always some changes. But I, I, I think the committee is entitled to understand whether, you know, these are functional changes uh, that are, you know, picked up that, oh, wait a minute, that, you know, we do need a lock on that door as opposed to, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what other else it could be other than that. Um, right. And I, I understand your point is when you have something that's already solidified in, in the contract, you shouldn't have to make any changes to it just because if it's a wish list like scope. item or that, you know, because this, this change order, let's say, you know, we didn't want it, you know, obviously came from the library staff at this point. And they may have, I remember Bob has been talking about key cards instead of keys for the doors and um is that yeah i don't think it's related i don't no, think it's not. related well, to that but um the point is we can't be going back backwards mm -hmm. agreed um or I, if it's set oh sorry mark but if it's set in stone right just you know stick to the plan you know don't don't change it because it comes a point in time you know the example that you put on furniture right you've ordered the furniture it's coming in and then somebody doesn't like that type of desk. Well, now you are stuck with that first product. So now you have an ad for that project. You won't be able to get a credit back for, you know, that that original desk. Let's call it. I we, we went through some of this three thirty four. Oh sure, every project has hardware changes because of the complexity no, of it. But well, after the fact. Well, we're not there yet, Bob. No. Hopefully, we don't get there. Right. But um, I personally want to believe and and uh, uh that our architect team is going to when they get requests for these changes are going to flag them if they're arbitrary or unnecessary okay and i do have faith that that will happen and it's, it's, you know it's, it's, like and the, the question staff, about what if somebody changes furniture but the same thing staff may have very good reasons for this i, I think i would also assume they do right yeah. you know so uh you know, I, I, I want to, you know, I just hope everybody's comfortable that, yes, the library staff has good reasons and that our architect will say to us, wait a minute, you know, based on our standards here, based on a code, based on whatever, th that these changes are probably not necessary. We haven't gotten that message. I do. Okay. I, 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 found, I, I found I found Deanna's sort of minutes here. It looks like it was CC to Elizabeth. Chris, uh, Allison, and it looked to me like uh, there were they wanted uh, you know there were some questions about the interior doors and they wanted door closers on the restrooms and the lactation room. Uh, technology training lab should have a card reader access. Uh, we would like the study rooms lockable by key. Uh, we would like the teen and middle grade room doors locked by key. So these were the changes. And that was back in August 8th of 2023. Yes, I was going to say we did this a long time ago. Yes, yes, this has been being uh, worked on for some time to get the final, it was at final the price. Right. Um, so, I mean, that all sounds reasonable to me. Um, thank you, Jeff, for that. Does, that. does that help, Lois? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay, but more questions. The oh. principle is still there, I think. Okay, more questions, comments? Let's uh, take a vote. Uh, all in favor of change order number, change order proposal number 11, please say aye. 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 We have a unanimous vote. Thank you very much for your comments. And one more. Last but not least, 13, this is for the TNM work that Manafort provided uh, for the underground unforeseen existing foundation for the Masonic mm -hmm. Temple. Uh, we directed not to impact our schedule to have Manafort provi uh, provide their work, uh, equipment, materials, and labor uh, on time and material, which is verified by Jason, our site superintendent, uh, to complete this work. 
He has signed tickets from Manafort verifying the equipment, the time, and the material used. Uh, we originally thought it was going to be around fifteen thousand uh, dollars from Manafort. It came in under that at eight thousand five hundred fifty-six dollars. As you can see here, this COP is a net zero. Uh, we do have, as part of our GMP, um, an allowance for removal of ground impediments, um, any unforeseens in the ground. Uh, so we are going to deduct $8,556 from that contingency to pay Manafort the $8,556, adding a zero cost change order. So moved. Moved by Mr. Reich, second by Mr. Berman. Questions? Questions, all right, all in favor of change order proposal number 13, please say aye. 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 It's unanimous, and I thank you all very much. And we will be, just to remind everybody, these are all change order proposals. We will see them again as when they become actual change orders. So that's uh, part of the process. Right. Going on. So the next process, you're gonna have change order number three, a GMP change order number three, it's gonna list all of these what are the five uh, five COPs with a net sum and a revised uh, uh, digital together? All oh, one to one change order. Correct. No P. All of them. Okay. Okay. Do you have photos to show us? I sure do. All right. We're moving on from this this section. <laughs> All right. All right. So what we have here is we decided to do a little modification and uh, detail some more information uh, to go along with our pictures. So my field staff today decided, and Johnny came up with the idea of showing you in relation to the, the structural plan of picture and correspondent with uh, the picture in the field. So thank you, Mr. Johnny Downs, uh, for taking care of that. So first things first, interior. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Johnny. All right, so the first picture that we're looking at is the interior concrete retaining wall. The forms are being installed and rebar has been placed. Uh, this is on the west elevation, the walk, walk looking uh, from the Washbrook side of the, uh, of the project. As you can see here, uh, we did highlight uh, the piers. Anything in yellow is, is what we're talking about and what it looks like in the picture on the plan itself. All right. Going down, we have uh, another picture, which is the footings with the rebar placed. Uh, this is shown prior to the concrete pour. This is the east elevation on the Tunxus Ave side, as you can see here. What you're looking at in, 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 in the floor plan uh, structural foundation view is that highlighted here in yellow. Moving down the list, concrete forms with rebar caps at the interior of the garage elevator stair location. This is where our construction main entrance is right now to the Prosser, uh, Prosser side. As you can see here, highlighted in yellow is on the floor plan of what you're uh, actually viewing in the picture as compared to the structural foundation plan. Keep plugging along. As you can see here, this is the interior other side of the retaining wall. Uh, the forms have been supported uh, with wood, uh, so once that concrete comes and they finish the other side, uh, we'll have no blowout, no concrete forms will we'll get busted out and will stay and maintain the rigidity of the actual forms itself. So as you can see here, we have a pretty long strip view highlighted in yellow of the retaining wall forms that are up, uh, as well as the four piers where you're going to have your structural steel columns sitting on the concrete. As you can see close to the left of this photo, you see that structural fill in the back there um, being brought up to 14 feet at one foot, two foot intervals with a compaction test. Uh, all that structural fill has been imported by Manafort. Um, if I could, I think there's another picture, but once you see here, is this 14 feet of structural fill will come across and go to the retaining wall itself once it's all done. Uh, just an interior shot of the rebar. You can see there, there's some plastic pinwheels, donuts we like to call, call them. It gives us the required spacing from the form 
by code, you're required to set that rebar, the verticals and the horizontals, two inches uh, from the face. Uh, so those items are there to make that happen and provide kind of like a, what we like to call it a, you know, at the end of the day, a share. Again, here's a view highlighted in yellow of where we're, we're talking as this item here is kind of boxed out in red, uh, a little further indication of where we're looking. This, this picture is the interior concrete retaining wall forms progression along with footing rebar that has been completed and formed up. Again, highlighted in yellow is the structural plan uh, looking at the items that have been formed up and completed. Interior, interior retaining wall and garage footings completely formed up, getting ready for the pour. And that's an inside view of the retaining wall looking down from the top um, once the two forms on both sides have been installed. Uh, this is kind of what T Tri State, who was our special inspector, uh, looks at um, and makes the final decision and sign off uh, on that requirement. So this type of rebar, um, I like to call it nest, goes all the way down that retaining wall line here highlighted in yellow. And then Anthony, that gets filled with concrete. That gets poured with concrete, all which way happened today. We had the pump trucks out there and probably about 10 or 12 uh -huh. tilcon trucks, uh, basically 10, wow. in, 10 minute intervals and yeah. pump the concrete and pour it in there. And it was a choreography beautiful. <laughs> That's great. Yep. And then we have a final shot. Actually, we maybe have one more page. But yeah. this is the concrete footing today that was successfully poured along the elevator uh, stair area. As you can see, this is the main entrance of the construction gate. Concrete has been installed. Uh, I should say poured. Rebar caps sticking up. Um, and again, at the next point in this process is once that concrete uh, cures and it's able to be walked on and, and it's actually, you know, solidified. Uh, we're going to start forming up the wall that's going to go over those vertical dowels of rebar. Concrete pier on top of that, you're going to have your structural steel column when the time comes. Right before that structural steel columns out, everybody needs to uh, concrete and the structural steel subcontractor do their own uh, anchor bolt survey to make sure that those are installed uh, to the right distance uh, from the edge of the pier, as well as the right distance in between in the center. Because what happens at the structural steel fabrication shop, those base plates get welded to the bottom of the tube column, and those holes need to match up exactly, or you have a nice column that doesn't fit. So <laughs> then we're really asking to clarify how we fix this. So all your Lego blocks <laughs> fit together nicely. So the, yep, the Lego blocks fit together nicely. That's always one of my probably most nerve wracking um, items <laughs> is once those columns come and you're trying to fit it on the thing. But you know, there's plans in place. If, if something's a little off, there's a reason why we survey and we lay out the building uh, as close as possible using, using GPS software, so on and so forth bunch of checks and balances. All right, as you can see here, uh, we have the structural fill. Uh, you can see the lifts taking place where you have the, the prior couple of days, you know, structural fill here in gray and the new stuff that just got bull, uh, bulldozered across the site and the elevation. Again, once uh, about half that east side, we've brought up to that 14 foot, 15 foot height. Once that retaining wall gets done and those concrete pair, piers poured, uh, we're going to be able to finish that second half and put the structural fill in. So you're going to basically have a whole new dance floor where the new slab is going to sit on. And that's the only side of the building that has slab on grade, other than the garage area that has any finished floor on it. Everything's going to be slab on deck and uh, moving forward. Um, and then decking, obviously, is the roof decking, which is a totally different type of product. All right, and then last but not least, um, we have here highlighted in yellow that Johnny did um, is all the footings uh, that have been poured and completed, as well as wall highlighted in green of what's been completed. As you can see, you have your outer perimeter footings and walls, 
to the north here, to the east, to the west, and to the south. Um, we have some some work le left to do for this concrete. So I'm thinking about another four to five weeks before we're all wrapped up with that. That's really it. You done? I'm done. I promise. Okay. Thank you, man. Anything thank else? You. Any other questions? Great job. Time? And thank you, Johnny. For, uh, Johnny, great job, by the way, buddy. <laughs> In color. In color. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's move on to um, our design team. Uh, TSKP, I see we've got Richard and Abby. Great. So um, this evening, we want to share with you uh, progress drawings that Jeff has been busy preparing, that Abby has been busy preparing. Uh, you may recall, uh, we promised we said we would show you this, and at the same time, we have forwarded it, or Jeff has forwarded it to Glenn so that he can review it. Um, Abby, I believe, uh, what's our timetable on this? Do you remember? Do you want me to bring up the Screen. The yeah, why not? No, yeah. just, just to remind everybody. Sorry, I caught you off guard. Oh, it's okay. I thought it would be good for the committee to see where we are relative to the timetable. Yep. Hold oh, one second. All right. Can you see, see Richard? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. So um, it's March, as you all know. Um, there was to be a community forum. I believe it didn't happen on March 5th. I think the schedule was changed, but we just didn't catch up with this table, I believe. Community forum, I believe, was yesterday, and that we're expecting some comments from members of the public, um, and I'm sure that will be shared with the committee. Um, our goal is to get committee approval for FF&E, the conceptual FF&E that Abby will be preparing, um, that is will be presenting this evening, and then finalize the finishes by the end of the month as well. So I believe the committee has a meeting on March 27th. It would be great that if on March 27th we could get the committee approval for the FFNE as well as the finishes. Actually, one small correction. Tonight we'll get the approval for the interior finishes for McMahon, and okay. the FFNE will be on March 27th. Okay, great. So that's I, I just wanted to remind everybody of the timetable that we're working toward. Um, and then April will be um, a, a, a pricing and um, proposals obtained from vendors and contractors. I, I think Glenn is going to be spearheading that effort uh, with um, some uh, construction starting sometime in May. So that's uh, that's just a brief reminder. And at this point, um, I don't know if, Jeff, you want to go first and then followed by Abby? Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, so I... Raggled all the consultants, got them all together at the last minute, got everything, light level calcs and everything, got the set pulled together, I think, enough for Glenn, probably more than enough for Glenn to start to look at pricing. I actually sent that off to uh, Scott at Downs as well to to take a look at. So I think uh, it's in Glenn's lap. I've CC'd uh, Mark and Nancy as well. So I believe we got everything covered uh, on on the architectural part of McMahon. So with that, I think the step now is for the finishes, Abby, right? You want to show what you've done? Unless you want to see the package. I, I don't want to borrow you with 100 and some pages of cut sheets for lighting. In fact, I'm just tired of looking at it myself personally. So it's kind of out there. It's in everybody's hands. We got it done in the time we said it was going to get done, but it's been kind of hectic, so... Yeah, thank you, Jeff. I don't think it's necessary to go through those okay. technical uh, technical details. It's available for anybody who wants to see it. So, okay, in that case, um, I'll go next. I will be presenting the interior finishes uh, color palette for the McMahon project. 
Um, just to start off with a reminder of what the furniture layout looks like, uh, we have the central service area, the service desk area, and then we'll have the adults on the north and the teens and the children's to the south of the building. Um, uh, this, I have had meetings with the library staff and they are, they're actually, I think, very excited that I was able to keep with the original color scheme that was established for the previously done project. Um, and now we can still keep those same carpets and finishes, or at least most of them. Um, it was just tweaked a little to fit into this scope. Um, just to show you what that was. So we had a we had this blue carpet, a green, and we always need a neutral to bring everything together. And uh, it was this gray. It, it's mixed with some cool and warm grays. And the way we'd like to use this now is this service desk area is sort of the um, space where all people will be coming in there first and then turn to either the left or right, whichever way they want to go. It made sense to maybe separate these spaces with the use of color. And the blue will be primarily used in the adult areas, including the office. And the green will be used for the children's and the teens. Um, while looking at it closely, the gray seemed too gray in the uh, as soon as you enter, and there was there is really not much opportunity to do much else in this location. This is all glass on both sides, and there is really no wall here. So um, it um, I thought it would be nice to play with some some of these green and blues in this space to bring some color. The circulation desk is probably going to be. Um, all maple at this point. The, and um, it seemed like bringing some floor color would be the best way to um, make this space a little more interesting. And when the patrons turn left, this was this was this um, would be a nice blue floor. Um, but to break the monotony of this floor, I thought it would be nice to play with some gray accents on the floor. Um, that way, there is some connection from the service desk area to the adult space. Similarly, with the, the children's space, we'd have mostly the green carpet and I'll bring in the gray as accents just to make it a little more interesting. This, this particular design didn't work very well in the teens area, so I'd like to keep this a solid green, but we'll have some nice furniture to complement um, that green carpet. Uh, um, there is plenty of brick in this building. Um, if you've all probably seen that. But I like to keep some of the brick, but I also want to not keep some of the brick. The idea being that um, having maintaining some amount of brick makes sense, especially where the exterior brick continues inside the building. For example, at this location, there is brick on the outside, which can continue in, and that will maintain some kind of a connection between the outside of the building and the inside. Similarly, we have a condition here. We have the vestibules where we can bring, we'll leave the brick alone. We have a similar condition out in the children's area also. So that kind, that existing brick can remain and we'd like to keep that actually as part of the design. Um, where we'd like to cover the brick is along this wall. This north wall of the adult area is, um, the brick is very dark and actually we have, we also have some problems with some moisture entering. Um, that problem will be alleviated once um, all the roof and the scuppers are fixed. However, the brick is not in the best, best condition right now. And similarly, all this wall is brick and uh, the, the amount of brick in this inside this space actually darkens the space and makes it look very old and dingy. I found a product which is, um, 
basically a, it's almost like a wall covering product, but it's not wall covering. It's called a wall liner. It was designed to go over existing brick or existing CMU and um, to give it a nice smooth surface. Now, the, this product is basically uh, made, it's jute encapsulated with um, gypsum cement. It comes in 48 inch wide rolls and it would be installed almost like a wall covering, um, you know, overlapped and double cut. Um, so there would be, uh, the seams would all be um, well matched. Uh, it gives a good smooth surface that can receive paint or any finish that needs to go. This is not a structural product by any means, but it will give us enough um, uh, smooth surfaces. That way we can just paint all these walls. And where we would use them is along this north wall, up all this here. We'll keep this brick as brick and we'll cover all this. Again, the four corners of the service desk area will leave the brick alone. This, oh, actually, this is going to be a chipboard wall because there is going to be a monitor here for a present for this presentation when this adult air space the, uh, becomes more like a small assembly type space. So we decided to do a chipboard wall, so that'll be painted. Um, and this wall is all CMU currently, and that can be covered with this liner. Again, this will all be painted and it'll be nice and smooth. And we have a little space here out in the teens. So trying to maintain some of the existing features, but still trying to update a lot more will give us that we'll, we'll still keep the uh, existing building, but it's going to have a nice um, make makeover. Uh, within the office and the staff lounge, currently, I believe it's all painted CMU. We'll just repaint. We'll give a nice fresh coat of paint, and that will make a big difference. Um, anybody that wants to say the bye to the wizard in the um, uh, staff lounge, no, I think it's in the office room. This would be a good time for that. Um, now, so um, we also had some accent paints already chosen for the project but we'll be using it a little differently here. We would bring this blue out to the presentation wall out here. This is going to have uh, shelving for periodicals in newspaper on both sides and the center part will be a monitor. I think the blue against the carpet um, will give it a nice uh, rich look. And in the children's area, we decided to do something a little more fun, something like this. We'd have the green carpet with the gray accents and we would, this is where the ceiling is at 14 foot six. And this is, this ceiling is, this is a ceiling at eight foot six. Uh, we have this pod here and we have some shelving and some computers. Uh, just to give it a little more fun, we thought we'd do an accent, not to cover the whole wall, but just a little curved sort of an abstracted version of uh, of a tree, not really, but sort of a tree, um, and make that wall a little more interesting. There will be a little floor change within this space from carpet. We would go to a linoleum tile because we have this new wall here and um, there is a water fountain here very close to the children's the especially the young kids story area i can totally see lots of water splashing and it made sense to just leave this whole space as linoleum there will be a transition a rubber transition from the carpet to this resilient tile there will be new tiles within the bathrooms, um, the floor and ceiling, and I'll go to that in a bit. So this is this pretty much covers the carpet. Now for the overall palette, oh, just another picture of what the carpet would look like installed, the green, the blue, and the gray. This is the overall palette that we're looking at. We'll have some, some of the existing brick, We'll have the carpet tiles, some accent colors, um, as much wood 
wherever as possible will be um, the natural maple. Um, all the doors we decided will be new. For example, the doors to the bathrooms, the storage room. And while we, had, uh, we have to buy new doors here anyway, because all this is changing, we figured we'd buy new doors for the office and the staff lounge and maintain that cohesive palette happening throughout. And maple is a nice color um, because most of the furniture manufacturers are able to make the furniture in maple. So it would be nicely coordinated with the furniture also. We would have some amount of this dark, um, the darker gray um, for hollow metal trim around the doors. Um, there's not going to be a whole lot, but that would be it. This is a picture of the linoleum tile. I would just leave the tile um, a neutral color and not try to bring too much attention there because it's going to be right next to the green carpet. I would prefer that people are looking at the green carpet more than this tile. Within the bathrooms, we'll have a porcelain floor tile. It has a little slight pattern to it. Um, it would be a 12 by 24 tile. And we will bring, um, it was decided that all four walls in the bathroom will have ceramic tile, uh, which will be much easier to maintain and keep clean. Um, so we went with this nice bright green. Um, this is a three by six ceramic tile in a gloss finish. This will go all the way up to the door jam height, which is about seven foot two inches and on all four walls. So that's the palette we are looking at. Um, so tonight, this is what I want. I would like the building committee to approve. I do have one more element I would uh, like to show, but this is pretty much what is going in the building now. Okay, questions for, uh, or you want, or you want to continue, Abby, or should we? Uh, um, uh, yeah, if there are any questions, I can stop. Yeah. Um, Patrick. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, Abby, if I understood you correctly, you're saying that these finishings and materials were the original ones from, you know, the McMahon as it would have been uh, enlarged. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Does that include? So, you talked about the brick and putting a covering over some of the brick. Was that included in original designs? No, the original design had gypsum board everywhere. Okay. This this, um, this wall liner is just a much more cost effective option to to a gyp board. Okay, okay, but those brick walls would have been there either way, right? If the building, um, was if I remember correctly, not all of them would have been there. Okay, uh, if they were if the. Uh, Part of the original walls would have been there, yes, but they were all going to be covered with chip. Yeah, so you can so they were going to be buried by much. your stud and, gyp uh, and so your drywall. Put furring strips, bolt oh, them okay. into the concrete, and then sheet it with the. Okay, so this way you're not doing any of that. Right, right. This is right. Stuff the way more cost effective. Okay, and then my la mm -hmm. my next question is about the area where the circulation desk is going to be. I was just wondering, is it more? Should that area be carpeted? Because there is going to be a heavy traffic area. I was just wondering if, is it more cost effective to put the linoleum that you're going to use down that sort of the hallway there by the lavatories? Would it be better to put something like that in that area instead of carpet? Okay, so we did run into an issue with trying to bring electric wires and data wiring. Right. With cabling, we went back and forth. We've, um, I know you probably, I've showed you a few different systems. And in the end, what we decided was an um, under carpet cabling installation. And it will work only with carpet. Okay. So that's one of the things. Um, the, um, it, it, it's basically a five eighth inch height um, product where all the, um, and it's all aluminum covered casing, it runs, it can run, um, well, we have this service desk area is so open and it was preferred that the service desk is in the middle of the space. 
it became mm -hmm. very tricky to bring any kind of power and data. And it is, um, uh, Chris had looked into maybe making this uh, building completely wireless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At this point in technology, we are not there yet. Um, he needed at least a few uh, data cables running to make uh, this space more efficient. Similarly, within the space, the car, the computers, we had the same issue. So we found this rep, we talked to him. Um, Jeff and Richard had an opportunity also to discuss and we all said this would be best and we brought it out to Glenn and uh, Glenn agreed that this might be the best system, but this will work only with carpet tiles. This cannot work with any other product, any other flooring product. But gotcha. however, these vestibules will get new walk-off mats. They will be the 24 by 24 permanently installed tiles. So that should take care of um, some of the dirt and everything. Also, this particular carpet is made by Shaw. Shaw is one of the better manufacturers out there for contract grade carpet. This, um, um, they have a very good backing system, which actually helps the face nylon work better. They have a li lifetime warranty on their product. That's one thing. Um, secondly, um, uh, I'm actually specifying a cushion back, so it's it's going to be a much softer carpet also. And it comes with, uh, it's a solution dyed carpet. It, uh, the nylon is solution dyed, meaning the color is um, inherent to the yarn, which also means that you can use a bleach solution to clean this carpet. That's one. And we should, we typically always ask for at least 5% attic stock for all the finishes that are specified in a typical project, like for Prosser, we would have included that information. But for McMahon, I would ask Glenn to um, make sure that we are getting a little bit of attic stock to keep. In case there is a big damage and it's not cleanable and it has to be fixed, it's carpet tile, we rip it out, Put it put a put on the next tile and we'll be done. So um, it should be easy to clean. It is a um, of course it is carpet. It is going to need some amount of cleaning. It uh, there is no self cleaning carpet yet. I'm waiting for that. <laughs> but um, but given the parameters of this project, I think this is the way to go for now. Okay, great. And lastly, how about the staff lounge? What goes on the floor in the staff lounge? Uh, okay, that's, that will also be linoleum. There is going to be a sink and there is going to be a refrigerator here. I'm expecting some amount of food going back and forth. It might be best to just leave this as linoleum. Okay. Thank you. Bob Berman? Yeah. Um, Abby, I presume staff has signed off on all this? Yes, they have had the opportunity to see all the products and um, they they liked what we showed. Okay, so they're happy with it. Yes. Okay. Uh, the material that, that you're going to be putting up on the brick, how's it going to be fast attached to the brick? Um, with an adhesive that the manufacturer recommends, it would be a water-based adhesive. Uh, and um, when that water-based adhesive is applied to the roll, it hardens the product and it just goes up just like wall covering. Um, uh, uh, like I said, it, it would just stick to the wall. There are no fasteners involved in this other than the adhesive. No metal fasteners or anything like that. What's the warranty period on the, on the adhesive? What's that? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. The warranty period on the adhesive and the trim. Oh, um, on the adhesive, as long as this liner is on the wall, it, nothing should happen to the adhesive, but I can check that for you. The reason I'm raising it is we have a problem with a, a similar kind of trim at 330 Park. Mm -hmm. uh, because it was all designed and anticipated to be with uh, people inside and, and then COVID hit. <laughs> And we had a problem because of humidity issues. Okay. And I'll you, check on that. You already said that uh, the brick, there's some problems with the brick on, for instance, seepage or wet. Right. There was. 
and, and, and so I'm concerned with with whatever you do with the brick adhesive coming loose because of because of moisture. <laughs> Um, okay, I don't know the answer to that question, so I will get back to you on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that, that's my only real concern. Sure. Thank you, Bob. Any other questions for Abby? Okay. Uh, can we have Looks a motion nice. to uh, approve these finishes? So moved. So, moved by Patrick, seconded by Mr. Ike. Can I do that? Any other comments? Can I just ask a question, a clarifying question? Of course. Um, just that that earlier conversation about the change orders and clarifications costing money was really scary. Um, once this is voted on and approved, is, is, does that mean that I, I'm I'm just I'm very we we are moving very very quickly with all of this. Like when I say quickly, change is happening today quickly. Um, and, and I guess I just want to have a better understanding of what this means once this is voted on. Does this mean it goes to Glenn and then, and then what? Yes, it, that means it goes to Glenn and he, we get pricing from contractors on it. Uh, and we have our, uh, duty to make sure we stay within our budget. Uh, so once we start assembling all these costs, we will be making a determination whether any changes need to be made to all of these hundreds of decisions. Um, so that's the process. Is, right. Is and, and so I guess I just wanted to iterate the fact for the library building committee that we are making so, so many decisions very, very quickly. Library staff, TSKP, everyone. And it's just... The, the pace is very quick. And Mark, that also relates to another question because I did watch the governance meeting um, last Monday where you presented and you said that there's two months of more money for the atrium in the budget. Uh, does yes. that mean that instead of a September one move out, it's a November one move out? Well, that's, that's in case we need it. It's not a let's use it money. Uh, whenever this, I mean, the plan has always been when McMahon is ready to be moved into, we moved into it. Um, and so we have, uh, a contingency, uh, to carry us further should we need it rather than viewing it as yes, we're staying and using all that money. I guess my question is whenever we can to not overly rush this process um well, that that's well, just my request so i see that we're... Elizabeth. we expect you to spend time make time to this is a very important thing you know whenever we have a project in town there's a lot of uh uh extra duties put on all our directors we went through this with schools we went through this with the community center um, and it's very important that you make the time to make these decisions and you're doing it. Thank you very much. We, we are uh, doing it. Yes. And, and I, and we all thank you for that. Uh, to say it's rushed. I, I don't understand that one bit at all. I mean, it, you, you make decisions and they're made, uh, you know, if you have second thoughts about them, uh, we need to understand that, but to arbitrarily say it's being rushed, I don't buy it. Uh, you know, our architect has done a fantastic job uh, in designing and bringing this to you and scheduling meetings. And I recognize this is in addition to your normal duties. But that's what happens when you have a project like this and you get a big prize at the end of it. Uh, so, you know, the comments about being rushed, I, I like I said, I, I don't understand it. Um, okay, so for instance... Um, one big example is we're still working through all the IT infrastructure and the electrical and all of that. So that's just one example that we absolutely do not feel confident in yet. So why, when I say this, I'm, I'm just, I'm nervous because we haven't uncovered all of the unknowns today. I know our acting, our interim IT director, um, was over at McMahon today with Public Works and with um, Assistant Director Silowak. And there was there's still so many unknowns as we're moving through this. So that I just, 
want to make sure that I am saying on the record that um, I'm pleased with everything that's happening with TSKP and these drawings, but I am very, uh, uh, there's a lot of anxiety around the pace um, that makes me feel very uncomfortable with with the pace. And so uh, I, I just want to make sure that that's there. And with that previous comment um, earlier about the change orders and, um, uh, you know, and I hear Lois, what she was saying, it made her uncomfortable, you know, $14,000. I still don't even understand what those costs were about. Um, and I'm, I'm just worried about because we are moving so quickly down the line, us being like, whoa, we didn't think that through when we approved all of that. So um, again, my my concern really is about the the IT infrastructure um, and all the electrical and the decisions to go under the carpet and everything. I mean, we're st we we haven't had time to even sit with that. So um, and again, th th that meeting was happening today with the interim IT director. Um, as I said two weeks ago, our IT director resigned. He's no longer with the organization. This is going to be the third iteration of an IT person um, helping mm -hmm. us oversee this. Um, and there's just a lot of moving parts. And and I know I think. Um, that meeting was cut short today and, and not all the players were able to be there for the entire time. So again, the pace is absolutely rushed to characterize it in any other way is, is not really uh, truthful, honestly. And I just want to make sure that we're all really comfortable with the decisions we are making. Well, yes, we want to be comfortable with the decisions that are being made uh, to say it's rushed. I, I just disagree. Okay, I have a lot more experience in this than you do. I'm telling you, we're not being rushed. Um, are you okay with the finishes tonight? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm actually very. That's what we're talking about. Finishes. That's what let's let's compartmentalize this a bit. Okay, that's how you make progress. You know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Okay, are we happy with the finishes? Then let's move on the finishes. I understand you still have questions on IT. We'll address those as they come. Okay, we're not voting on IT. Uh, we're voting on finishes tonight. Okay. So please continue your concerns about IT. Those things do need to be worked out. That's your next bite of the elephant. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor. And uh, we have a hand from Ava. Yeah, I'm listening to this conversation and I would like to point out that the library has short staff. They do not have all of their materials available to them. They have an increasing load and they answer to the board. So to just say, we expect you to make time is not necessarily realistic. The charge to this committee was to build this building with an eye to service. The first priority of this library is service to the people of this town. Every decision they're making, every hour they spend on other things, we understand, but not when it gets to the point where there is something constantly impinging on provision of service. So yes, we we do see Elizabeth and her staff working many more hours than is in their schedule. They are doing everything they can to do this. And I think they deserve a modicum of respect when they express an expert opinion that there are issues that make them uncomfortable. So I understand that people are stressed. I understand that people are impatient. But we only get one shot at this, and we would like it to be right while still providing our core mission, which is service. Thank you. Thank you, Ava. All right, we do have a motion on the floor, correct? Yeah. 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 There was other, there were a couple of other things that I didn't know if we wanted to wait on before we did the approval. There were some wall coverings. Wall graphic. Um, do Abby, do you have more to present that we should be voting on? 
Muted. You're muted, Abby. All right, yes, I realized that, sorry. Um, I do have a couple other things to show, but um, tonight I would like the committee to approve just these finishes. So Glenn can go ahead with uh, his process. Um, and um, once we're done with that, I will move on to finishing up my presentation with the last couple of ideas I have. Okay, thanks, Abby. So our motion is appropriate. Yeah. Any other comments, questions on the motion? Yes, That's Mr. Chair. Okay, so I think my question is partially answered anyway from an earlier comment, but I was more concerned about the budget and I think Lois back to what you had said a couple of weeks ago. So I think we were still waiting to see, you know, how all these things are going to fit together, but I guess we won't really know that until Glenn's able to go out and get the bids and the pricing. Yep. But I was still looking for maybe a a framework of how much is allotted for FF and E versus uh, the work that Glenn's doing. Four hundred thousand. Oh, okay. So we know we know that. Okay. Technology so, and definitely. our FF and E budget and technology budget has not changed. Okay. From the time the building had the addition on. Okay. Okay. So we're not voting on the the budget anyway tonight. Just the finishes, but it's with that caveat that all of these things that Glenn will go out and look at have to fall within that 400,000. No, this no, none no, of these finishes because... are, are in the FF. Right. And this is not FF&E. Uh, this, okay. is, this, this is, is the construction portion. The construction. Okay. So when he goes and gets pricing, say, for the toilet rooms, right. it will be with this type that of tile mm -hmm. and the flooring. When he goes oh. and gets the prices for the carpeting, It'll be this particular manufacturer type of company with these colors. Okay. And so it's not part of the FF not part of the construction. Okay. So that budget is the 2.1.5. Oh, 1. 5. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll give you an updated one when we have it. Okay. We don't have it. That's why okay. I had incentive. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that's that we were voting on just these finishes, not relative to the budget. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. And, and, uh, and the any other percent. questions, comments on the motion? What is? Could you repeat the motion, please? Uh, the motion is to approve the finishes that um, Abby has presented. And she's presenting additional finishes after we vote. She has some other things to show us. Okay. So this I, is, this whether is the... they require another vote or not, I don't know. But we'll let's take it once bite at a time. Right. Two, three, no. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay, all in favor of having uh, finishes presented, please say aye. 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 Are there any days? Anybody abstaining? I believe it was unanimous. Thank you. All right, Abby, you may continue. All right, thank you very much. Um, so as I was brainstorming through the project and I was um, looking at the existing pictures and just trying to come up with more ways to make the space more interesting. Um, one idea that came to me as I was looking actually for um, inspiration pictures was one of the websites, well, actually one of the manufacturers that we've used before uh, to make wall, uh, wall covering, wall graphics. Now, this is a manufacturer I chose because um, they make standard products, and but they also make very large scale patterns, which are which is a little different from most other manufacturers. And I thought it could be a fun element to bring into the project. However, this was never part of any of the budgets, so I don't know how it's going to play out. But um, it also gave me a basis for what I might uh, do when when I get into the FFNE portion, trying to figure out the fin uh, furniture finishes and fabrics. Now, when I do the uh, FFNE presentation, you'll see a lot of the FF uh, furniture will the the cost will depend on the finishes and fabrics. So uh, it was since that's going to come up soon. I've, uh, I and I was trying to work as a whole for this project, the interiors and the and the furniture in place. Uh, some of the wall graphic ideas that I came across gave me an a, a sort of a basis for what my furniture finishes could end up. 
if we get the wall graphics, we have enough money in the project at the end, and if we can get it, it would be nice. If we don't get it, we'll still play with those colors and patterns on the furniture also. So where I would put that is, we have this really tall ceiling, and now you're just going to have to use a lot of your imagination. All this is going to be a, a creamy colored white wall. There is a double, sort of a double soffit happening here. This, this one, this layer, the lower layer actually is a couple inches. Um, uh, 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 the top layer is inset. Uh, the top layer is inset a couple inches. So there, it's a two-part soffit. And, I, and this is actually pretty high. It's more than three feet high. This seemed like a good opportunity, a good place to maybe put some nice big pattern, something interesting as the patrons walk in. And this is true for the children's side also, but let's first do the adult side. And I would, as of now, I would like to run that wall, wall graphic throughout because we're going to have computer tables here. We're going to have some shelving and back in this wall, uh, we'll have lighter colored shelves, but um, with maple wood ends. And there's going to be display shelves here. So this is meant to be a more um, uh, attractive wall where people walk in and probably walk to this wall to see the new collection displayed. And I showed the library staff several options and what they chose was this. It's a, this would be, this graphic piece would cover the entire, and this would be the scale that you see, the uh, more than three feet high. Uh, given the carpet with the gray tile as, um, <clears throat> as an accent piece, I thought this color scheme would work well. Uh, I had a couple other options also, but I think this is what the library staff really liked. Having some amount of a, this brings in not just color, but also sort of a biophilic design into this space, uh, trying to connect with nature in some way or the other, but in a more artistic abstract way. Now, these are all copyrighted uh, patterns, so I cannot make any changes to that uh, if this goes on, but for now, when I do the furniture, if this is a good direction to go in, I might try and pull some of these colors to do my furniture specifications. Similarly, in the children's side, this, this is all going to be very different. The, this door is going to be new. Um, we do have some accent wall paint coming in, but we have the same condition up here. And the pattern that the library staff chose was um, birds. Again, this shows you how it goes well with the carpet, um, the greens and the, uh, and the grays and lots of other colors. Within the children's area, we don't have too many upholstered pieces, but um, so this might be a good place to bring some pattern and fun into the space. Um, however, if this <clears throat> doesn't happen, I will try and do my best um, to bring something on the furniture. Uh, so I don't need any voting tonight for this products, but this is just to say that, you know, putting it on the wish list as a design item for now, we'll see how everything plays out. And Abby, what um, what kind of time frame do we have to uh, before we have to pull a trigger on those? Um, I would wait till we get the costs of um, the construction, the FF and E, IT, and everything else before we do this. This is a this is an element that can go even at um, well. Typically, I would prefer that if this happens, that it's installed before furniture is installed in the building because anything that's done on the ceilings somehow the installers love to climb up on the new furniture to fix things on the ceilings. And I I, I prefer they don't do that. But in case um, this gets delayed, um, it will be nice to get this done at any time. Uh, 
it's better to get it done than not at all. So we can wait to see how everything else plays out. I do know we have a whole wall in that children's area that needs to come out and we're gonna put all that new glass and the teens room glass was included. So those things are more essential and we, we really want to do those things. But once the walls are opened, we don't know what to expect or what surprises might be there for us. So these are some fun things to include in the project. And uh, I don't wanna give you a timeline now, we can do this at any time, but we'll wait and see how everything plays out first. Hey, okay, Abby, those, those... Re yeah, just keep us aware of, uh, you know, if, if we need to be moving forward with it, at, you know, at some okay. point. I was yeah. going to say, Abby, those owls have your eyes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. Lois? Abby, could you go back a minute and show me the space again? And... Ex and uh, the children's side, because I do love the owls. Um, on how many walls would this be being put? So this would go on four sides, down here, and it would turn here and go this way. And it, of course, we can see the fourth side from this picture, but there's going to be a fourth side here. And I'm not good on spatial things, but my question would be, is that going to make it seem smaller? The, the space, having that um, much stuff uh, on four sides. I don't think so, but I will be getting a mock-up drawing uh, from the vendor, from the manufacturer. I requested them to do a quick sketch for me to see what the scale might be like and what it would look like, and I'd be able to judge better. But this is a much larger space than we think, and. Uh, uh, that ceiling height is is really high, and I think it would be fun to have a large scale pattern. I I do not see it as making the space look smaller. No. So it's four feet tall, but and how many feet long in each on each edge? So the, it, this is about three three and a half feet. I want to say about three feet five inches at least. Yeah. And um, here we have about 25 feet, I think. And on this side is about 38 feet, something close to that. So it's a large area to cover. Um, but I, I, I think given that most of the furniture, especially in the children's area, is shelving and very minimal um, seating or anything else, uh, I think that might be a fun thing to do. Again, when the cost comes in and if we feel like maybe it, it's too much to do all the walls, maybe I would do just here because this is this would be a focal point when people enter the vestibule and they turn right or left. This might be a good location to put that graphic and uh, maybe leave that. That way we have something, even if not all, Something would be fun. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> uh, Bob. Yeah, just a different thought. Uh, I like to, I, I like the concept that you've come up with, but I'm thinking we have a lot of very good local artists and having them come in and, and do Custom. murals or something like that on those yeah. walls, uh, I think might be <laughs> a good See, idea. It, it, it might be a good idea, but I, I can't, I can't um, make that call or judge that oh, idea. Sure. The only thing is this is really up, way up high, and uh, a wall graphic is probably the easiest way to get something here. Um, but if yeah, it, Bob, it, Bob, this is Richard. I'd like to comment on that because um, selecting a artist to do installed art in whatever medium is selected can be complicated. The selection process, how you go about creating a competition that's fair, um, some people may be disappointed. And the quality control is, is risky. So what Abby is proposing is a manufactured product. This is where quality is controlled in a factory setting. Um, we've used this material before 
and you you can rely on the manufactured quality rather than an artist. Um, that's my observation. And also the the colors. Um, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Abby. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, also, the colors of these patterns go very well with the uh, carpet and the accent paints. And that was another reason we'd like to just stick to something like this, a standard product, rather than um, some unknown artist at this point. Okay. Well, let's hold that thought and uh, we don't have to make a decision tonight on it. No, this is just to show you, because if I come up with some crazy furniture ideas, I don't want to question mm -hmm. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, more questions uh, for Abby? All right, now. All right. Abby. Nice job. Yeah, thank Abby. you. With that, I'm going to Good stop job. sharing my screen. Thank, thank you, much. everybody. I think it's really come together very, very, yeah. very well. And, uh, and we do appreciate all the staff time that has gone into it, obviously, uh, as well. Okay, um, uh, TSKP, we're good, Richard, and... Uh, yep. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Okay, all right, well, we thank you for being here tonight. Let's move to um, Sean from Kyers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my report is, I try to keep it brief, um, in terms of special testing, uh, Anthony kind of stole a lot of my thunder, <laughs> but Tri-State's been out uh, inspecting rebar, concrete placement, uh, taking all the appropriate samples. Uh, they, they're also there during the observation of the placement of the structural fill. Uh, let's make sure it's installed properly, compacted properly, they do the compaction testing. All those reports have been forwarded to Michael Horton Associates, the Special Inspector Coordinator, as well as the... Uh, Structural engineer of record and Max Welty, the um, uh, what am I looking geotech. for? Geo, is he the, the actual geotech um, for his review? So they've all been reviewed by the appropriate people, including the local building official. Um, in terms of commissioning of the building, Van Zelm is involved in the process, uh, reviewing the approved submittals as they come in and any RFIs that come in pertaining to building systems. And as you saw from Anthony's pictures, the progress on the site is the concrete is uh, proceeding along and all the proper procedures are being followed. And the um, I've been reviewing the PCOs with uh, Jason and Anthony in the trailer as these items come up and do our best to keep those in line. Um, any other questions? Questions for Sean? Okay, thank you for being there. Thank you for your report. Thank you. And with that, um, we have no purchases, correct? But we have many, many invoices because we've made a lot of progress, right? We have lots Nancy? of invoices. So the first one is from GeoQuest invoice 10150, and it's for environmental consulting services. Um, uh, to March 1st, and it's $525. So moved. Second by Mr. Ike, second by Mr. Berman. Questions, comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays. Abstaining. I believe it was unanimous. Thank you. Next, the next, Nancy. The next several I'm going to go through are Collier's, and they date back to last summer. And the reason for that is because we were renegotiating their fee and there had to be some um, reshuffling of assignments. So, you know, bear with me. Um, these haven't been sitting in a drawer someplace um, all summer. They were um, waiting to for the contract to be renegotiated. So the first one is invoice 924364, and this is for their services through 83123 for $5,740. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Ike, seconded by Mr. Berman. Questions, comments? Uh, Nancy, is this the one that includes the trap uh, the travel? It looked like all the travel got put on one invoice. This does not include travel. 
Yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, this is for that additional pre-construction services. That, that's the last, I believe, the last of these invoices that we're going to have from Collier. So, Thank you. any other questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 They are unanimous. Thank you. Next okay, is next. invoice 924-899. This is for Colliers for Professional Services through September 30th, 2023, and the amount is $5,100. So moved. Second. Mr. Berman, second by Mr. Ike. Questions? Comments? So, Marsha, do you have a question? I see you a little. No. Okay, thank you. More questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, we are unanimous. Thank you very much. Next. Next is invoice for Collier's invoice 925-135 for services through October 31st, 23, and the amount is $6,410. So moved. Second, Mr. Reich, second by Mr. Berman. Questions? Comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are unanimous. Thank you very much. Motion passes. Next. Next is Collier's invoice 925-358 for services through November 30th, and the amount is $4,050. So moved. By Mr. Ike. Second. Second by Mr. Berman. Questions? Comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are unanimous. Motion passes. Thank you. Two more. Next is Collier's invoice 925-512. Services through December 31st, 23 for $2,080. So moved. Second moved by Mr. Ike. Second moved by Mr. Berman. Questions, comments on this one? All in favor, you say aye. 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 We are unanimous. Motion passes. Thank you. Next is invoice from Collier's 926-293 for services through January 31st, 2024, $6,216. So moved. Second by Mr. Ike, second by Mr. Berman. Questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are unanimous. Motion passes. Thank you. Last one. No, it's not. We've got more. Oh, you do have more. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean the last Colliers. Oh, there is one more Colliers. Mm -hmm. The last of Colliers. Yes, That's the last of Colliers is um, 929-274. Um, this is for the reimbursable the mileage and services through uh, February. So the total amount of that invoice. Oh wait a minute. It looks like four thousand nine twenty five fifty five. Total only says yeah four forty five fifty five. No, no, it's not on the second page. Oh, thank you. Ah, yeah. 40, All right. Forty nine twenty five fifty five. Yeah. So moved. Moved by Mr. Wright. Second. Seconded by Mr. Berman. Questions, comments. And just uh, for clarification, sorry. No, go ahead. I have that. Just for clarification, is that cumulative mileage for for all of this time? I don't see mileage on this invoice at all. <laughs> it's the same services that are on the other invoices. No, it, it, no, it, it's it is mileage. mileage. It, it, the, the final it page. Says total uh, the final page. Final page says mileage. So I don't okay. know if it's In just there. for this month. No, it's or a total for... project. Since the beginning of time. Oh, I presume total project means since. Or since, since we yeah, revised. Total yeah. project. That's the 445.55. That's the 445.55. Yeah. And then yeah. there's 44.80 for yeah. um, services. You, I, didn't see that. <laughs> I didn't scroll down enough. Are we, are we okay? Yeah. As long as it's community. Not just oh, a we, we can we can we can make our approval contingent upon that. Okay. If we if we uh, as a friendly amendment want to do that. Sure. Um, Accept it. Accept it. Okay with that friendly yeah. amendment. Yes, yeah. sir. Hey, Bob, you're okay with it. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. 
approval of uh, the motion with uh, with that contingent on it. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And we have a unanimous approval. Thank you very much. So that takes care of Collier's. I know we had to go back in time there, but they they owed us a really total revision of the whole format of their uh, invoices based on the contract. And we appreciate them doing that. Nancy, you have okay. more. Okay, yes, we have more. TSKP Studio, invoice number 200802-26. And this is for Prosser Basic Services through the end of February. And the amount was $21,064.05. So moved. Moved by Mr. Ike. Um, second. Second by Mr. Berman. Nancy. We have that in our package. No, I don't see no. it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It was the subsequent one? No. Right, they only no, have tri-state. I thought sent it out yesterday. No. LBC Downs and no. tri-state. Oh. We can hold this till next time if you... So you can have a chance to review. If you're, if you're okay with that? I'm okay with it. It's all uh, construction phase services for 21064 And it's all for Prosser? It's all for, it's just presser and it's 33.8% complete. I'm okay with it. Does anybody want to table this? I'm not hearing anybody. Any questions or comments on it? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody saying nay? Abstentions? We are unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Now, now we move on to Tri-State. The first one is invoice 13464. And this is for the um the regular the regular inspection services and it's eight hundred and eighty-six dollars. So moved by Mr. Ike. Stated the very side. I sent it this the very last one. Yeah, it's the bottom. Okay, how much, how much printing? Okay. Second. Second by Lois. Questions, comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Are we unanimous? Thank you. Motion passes. Next. Next one is also Tri State. It is invoice number 13438. This is for their regular inspection services. And it is $916. So moved. By Mr. Wright, seconded by Patrick. Second. Thank you. Questions? Comments? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Two more. Two more. Next one is invoice 13377 from Tri State. And this is for the vibro peer inspections, the special inspections uh, that they were doing, the testing, and it's three thousand one hundred twenty-eight dollars and seventy-five cents. So moved. Second by Mr. Ike, seconded by Mr. Berman. Um, Sean, is is that um, in total for the, um, or just a interim for the vibro pair? Those last two were vibro pairs, and oh, there's another one. Didn't yeah. the other one is also a vibro pair? Yeah, okay. yeah. Yep. And so I believe overall we were under budget. Okay. That was my question. Yes. I believe so. But yeah, but now this and the next invoice is is the total of the correct because there'll be no further um, inspections. Yeah, Stra uh, subsurface did a hell of a job for us getting in and getting out as fast as they can. So that was able to save the tri state. Right. Because we budgeted for 20 days and I think we installed it in 10, 12, 10 or 12. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So, uh, any other questions, comments on the motion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Thank you very much. The final one from tri state is 13414. This is also for the vibro care inspections, and it is $5,960. So moved. Moved by Mr. Ike, seconded by Patrick. Patrick. Thank you very much. Questions, comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 
The motion passes. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Sean, for that clarification. Um, okay, so that's we are up to uh, announcing our next meeting, which is on the 27th, followed by April 10th. And we are ready for um, public comments. Yes. Other, other comments from the committee? Other items from the committee? I'm sorry, I did. I skipped sorry. right over that. Thank you very much. It's been a long meeting. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, uh, other items from the committee, committee members. Uh, Elizabeth. Yes. Um, one announcement, that being that um, Bloomfield Public Library dropped our fiscal year 2023 annual report. It's on our website. Um, and then I also had a question. Um, I know that I had asked previously about the McMahon Wittenberry budget. Do we have that to share with everybody or because I still have not seen anything about that? Yeah, I mentioned earlier that I'll share it when it, when it's finished and updated. We'll send it out. You must you know? have heard me when I said that. No, I don't. Oh, know. I didn't hear you that. Here when you said that, do you know when that will happen? No, I don't. Okay. Well, we anxiously await the uh, the updated budget. Thank you very much. Um, other comments from the committee? May I ask Elizabeth uh, how sure. the meeting went? Absolutely. And and what uh, she learned from it. Thank you, Lois. Yes, we did have a successful meeting last night. Um, the open house was great. Um, it was some people's first time visiting. And then um, we were able to show the floor plans for uh, the current floor plans for McMahon Wittenberry Library. The uh, glassed off teen space was absolutely a hit. Um, and I think people liked the idea of how the space is divided up between the adult and the youth. Um, we did get a lot of feedback forms and we're currently going through them. I haven't got to look at them yet. So this is just based off of um, verbal feedback that we received um, last night, but we are going to compile and report back more um, once we're able to dive into those. Great, thank you. Any other comments from the committee? Okay, I'm sorry I skipped over that. Uh, all right, so now we're into public comments. And just a reminder to everybody, please uh, give us your name and address. And uh, and we try and hold it to three minutes. And do we have some? Hi. Oh, uh, hi. Yeah, hi, I'm Beverly Merritt. I'm hi, Beverly. 31 Woods Road in Bloomfield. Uh, I'm the vice chair of the library board. And uh, I am concerned about your comments about leaving the atrium early. Um, I'm concerned about the swing space that you're planning on possibly moving to McMahon, which is not a suitably large enough space to provide all the services that Bloomfield requires and wants. Um, and I think that uh, we need to reconsider that position. And that's my comment. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Anybody else? Uh, Anybody oh. from the public who would like to speak? Okay. Ed Savage, go ahead. Unmute yourself. You're still muted. Okay. There now, you there you go. Okay, I, I would like to uh, repeat some comments that I put in writing to the library board uh, that the um, acceleration of the work on McMahon is very laudable. I'm very pleased to see that happening. As Ava Biffer so neatly put it, service to that section of the community is extremely important and the restoration of that location for people who were walking in rather than taking a bus to the uh, present and somewhat inaccessible atrium is extremely important. I, I understand the timeline for this might include finishing it up before the end of this, this year. And that again is wonderful. The only thing I would suggest is that in all of the public presentations, you continue to present 
both the original plan and the revised plan, because I think we need to keep before the public and the council in particular, the prospect that McMahon is still too small to serve the purposes uh, that, th that this community needs. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Next Anyone else? We have, yes. Aaron Corbett. Good evening. Can folks hear me? Yes, we can. Wonderful. I just wanted to echo um, and co-sign with the prior two comments. I think that we really need to pay closer attention to this conversation about potentially leaving the atrium. And then yes, and unless there are substantial cost savings that can be demonstrated by this move in addition to how we are able to maintain services to our citizens on a consistent level, then that's that needs to be part of the conversation before we make any rash decisions that ultimately um, can damage the relationship and the trust that the town has in its library. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public who'd like to speak? Go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, well, I thank you all for attending and your comments. And with that, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. By Mr. Egg, second by Mr. Berman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned, and I thank you all very much for. Uh,